This video is going to look at the bonding and structure of metals. Most of the elements on the periodic table are actually metals. Remember, there's a staircase divide from the top of aluminium. Aluminium, you know, is on the metal side, so everything on the left of that is a metal. We make a lot of things out of metals, they're very common on Earth, so it's, this is what's useful to understand about bonding in metals. And metals, which are in group one, two, some in group three, they have got more electrons in their outer shell than they want. They want to lose electrons to get a full outer shell. That's the octet rule that we looked at last time. So that's the first important thing to know about how metals bond. Metal atoms lose electrons. I can show that with a half equation or ionic equation we sometimes call them if that's a sodium atom because sodium is in group one it's going to lose one electron in order to get a full outer shell i show that by showing that it makes a sodium ion and loses electrons so the electron at the end is now separate from the atom and because it's lost a negative electron it becomes a positive ion and we call that a positive cation so form positive cations that determines how they arrange themselves let's say that these counters are positive metal cations think like magnets because they're all positive they want to repel each other so because they all repel each other they're going to all push each other as far apart as possible. They're going to repel to make a really consistent, even pattern. Because they're all repelling each other as much as they possibly can. Of course, this is a 2D representation. In reality, we're in 3D. So there's rows, there's columns, and there's also that third dimension. I've just shown you 3 by 3 in reality, atoms are so small that even if you just add a really small bit of metal, there are billions of metal cations in the rows and in the columns and going in and out in even a tiny bit of metal. So that's why we call this kind of structure a giant metallic lattice. The word giant because... It's so big, there are billions of ions in all the different directions. And the word lattice describes this uh, pattern of rows and columns. Okay, just to show you how you would draw that as a diagram, you would draw like I've just shown those counters. You would use a pencil to draw, and you would draw it more neatly than me. I'm just using a pen, I'm trying to go quickly, just so the video is a bit easier to follow. I'm going to show that these are positive ions. And I'm going to label that they are Na+, because this is a piece of sodium metal that I'm showing. Na plus cations. Means they're positive. Okay, we've also got these electrons. I've shown nine cations, so I'm going to show nine electrons, and I'm going to show them as a little E minus. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine okay you'll see that i've not put those in a consistent pattern i've put those randomly i'm gonna label those delocalized electrons because electrons are so small and light they're not held in place they're able to move around freely and that's what the word delocalized means it means they're no longer held to their cation it means they're able to move around freely so that is what all metals will look like in terms of their structure what actually is the bonding what's holding it together well the fact that we've got these positive cations and these negative electrons means that we've got attraction between positive and negative, and that is what holds metals together, and it's quite a strong force. So I'm going to say the bonding is the attraction. And it's important that we're really specific with this, is the attraction between 
positive metal cations. And delocalized electrons. So that is why metals bond the way they do. That's the structure that they form, although remember it's 3D. And that is how to draw a diagram and how to label it.